Hello everyone, and welcome back to Main Tech. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you won't miss any of our videos. So, a few videos ago, I reviewed another Latitude 3440, which I'll link below. This laptop has a higher spec, and I figured it was worth comparing to the original one I reviewed a few weeks ago. Today we have the Dell Latitude 3440 2023 model, 13th Gen i5, 32 gigs of RAM, NVIDIA MX550 GPU, and a 512 gig NVMe SSD priced as configured at $1,998 USD. However, before I get to this review, I'm super happy to announce our first giveaway. Once we hit 500 subscribers, I'm going to be giving away at a minimum a 2 terabyte NVMe SSD. So if you're not subscribed, please take a few seconds and subscribe down below. First, a few housekeeping items before we start. This laptop was not provided to me for review. I purchased this laptop for a customer at their request. Regarding testing setup, this laptop is running Windows 11 Pro with all the Windows updates as of this video on May 19th, 2023. Furthermore, I ran Dell's command update utility to ensure all device drivers and firmware was up to date. Just like the first model I reviewed, one thing I'd like to note is the Dell command BIOS update utility reported that BIOS is fully up to date. However, after checking Dell's website, there is a newer BIOS revision, which I did install. Command update only provided BIOS version 1.2, where Dell's website provides version 1.3. Lastly, I ensured the NVIDIA drivers were fully patched, as well as Intel RST. At first glance, the Latitude 3440 presents a professional, sleek aesthetic. This laptop weighs just at 3.52 pounds, just 0.1 more pounds than the previous laptop without the dedicated GPU. It's 8.6 inches deep, 12.7 inches wide, and it's 0.7 inches thick. Let's start off with the screen. The Latitude 3440 comes with a pretty standard 14 inch display. It's not exactly the sharpest or brightest on the market, but it does get the job done providing a decent color reproduction and viewing angle. It's more than adequate for the everyday tasks like document editing, web browsing, or video calls. This model is equipped with a 14 inch 1080p touchscreen with 300 nit peak brightness, which is the brightest screen you can get out of any configurable screen option. You can choose between a 250 nit IPS screen with or without AR for Windows Hello, or a 768p TN panel with no touchscreen with only 220 nits of brightness, which I personally would recommend staying away from. So this is a test of the audio and video on this machine's built-in webcam. Now this specific model only has a 720p webcam at 30 FPS. So how does it look? How does it sound? I feel like it probably didn't look that great. Um, very surprised you can get a 720p webcam in the precision lineup. However, you can go up to 1080p. It just wasn't offered with a screen model. Now let's talk performance. This machine comes with Intel's latest 13th generation i5-1335U CPU. As expected from a new release, the performance is pretty standard for a 13th generation Intel CPU. The CPU has two performance cores, eight efficiency cores, which yields a total of 12 threads. On the Passmark CPU performance test, this laptop scores a total of 16,660 on the CPU mark, with a single threaded score of 3,462. One interesting thing is the previous laptop with the exact same CPU scored 17,156 points on the CPU mark, with a score of 3,613 on the single core test, so a bit of a discrepancy. I went back and reran all tests, and I can confirm for no apparent reason this specific CPU in this model is a little bit slower than the first one. Must be a difference in the silicon. This laptop's CPU performance falls right in between the flagship 9th and 10th generation desktop CPUs in multi-core performance and nearly identical to an 11th generation i9 mobile CPU. On single thread performance, the CPU is actually faster than all the CPUs mentioned above. Remember, Passmark Benchmark is free to download and run on your computer, so you can compare the results. Just go to Passmark.com and download the performance test. The next set of results factor in not only the CPU, but SSD speed as well as the RAM speed. This PC has 32 gigs of DDR4, not 5, in dual channel mode, so two 16 gig sticks. The SSD is a 512 gig Gen 3 NVMe SSD made by Kaoxia, specifically the BG5 model. These are the exact same drives as the other model before. This laptop scored an overall score of 5,647, which is substantially higher than the 16 gigabyte model without the dedicated GPU which scored 3,920 on the Passmark performance test. Moving over to the PCMark 10 test, this laptop scored an overall score of 5,903, which is quite a bit faster than the previous model, which scored 5,090 on the standard test. This laptop scored 5,750 versus 4,382 points on the full extended test, and 5,790 versus 4,800 on the express test. 
comparing the previous model without the GPU and half the RAM. Taking a look at SSD speed, the drive in this laptop is able to read just over 3.2 gigabytes per second and write 3.1 gigabytes per second on sequential or the large file transfers, and it hits nearly 460 megabytes a second random read and 422 megabytes a second random write. Over on the Passmark disk mark, this drive scores 22,930 points. The SSD compares to the common Samsung 980 Pro, Patriot Viper, Sabrent Rocket 4.0 SSD, so very acceptable performance from what I consider a fairly budget price. Moving over to the last set of performance benchmarks, this laptop scores 3,200 points on the 3DMark CPU profile and 1,559 points on the storage benchmark. Since this laptop has a dedicated GPU, I did run TimeSpy GPU benchmark through 3DMark, which this laptop scored a total of 2,590 with a 2,457 GPU score and a 3,746 CPU score. This laptop will handle the normal business suite of applications smoothly and even some photo editing or video editing with ease. If you're looking for a reliable work machine for normal everyday tasks, this laptop will be just fine. Typing, the trackpad, and the webcam are all the same as the first laptop I reviewed of this model, so if you're interested in seeing my detailed thoughts in that video, I'll link it below. Lastly, let's talk thermals. One thing to note about this laptop is anytime you put this laptop under a full load for more than two minutes, it'll start to thermal throttle or slow down the speed of the CPU to keep the temperatures in check. After just two minutes, just like the other revision of this laptop I tested, the CPU hits a peak temperature of 95 degrees before cutting power to the CPU and reducing performance. This laptop does turbo boost up to 4.576 gigahertz, but while running the full Passmark suite of tests, it averages 2.4 gigahertz, which again is slightly lower than the other laptop I tested with the exact same CPU. Now, don't let thermals deter you from considering this laptop, as this is the case for nearly all laptops of this size. In normal office tasks, you should not run into any issues unless you're out in the field or in a hotter environment. So, what are the pros and cons versus this laptop with double the RAM and a dedicated but small GPU versus a laptop with only 16 gigs of RAM and no dedicated GPU? Well, I think it obviously comes down to what you're going to be doing with it. Are you planning on running multiple 1080p monitors or a couple 1440 or maybe one or two 4k displays? Do you do any photo editing, video editing, or maybe even some like CAD work? If so, I think it's a no-brainer to get the model with a dedicated GPU and double the RAM. If you don't plan on doing any of those above things or are willing to sacrifice a bit of performance and save 600 bucks, then I think the model without the dedicated GPU is just fine. Just make sure to decide up front as you can't upgrade the GPU down the road. If cost is a big concern, and I was set on getting this latitude, I'd personally get the dedicated GPU with less RAM and upgrade the RAM down the road whenever more funds are available. This laptop has two fully removable sticks of memory and it isn't vendor locked, so brands like Crucial or Corsair should work just fine assuming you're getting the correct speed and voltage. If you're unsure of which speed and voltage to get, I'd browse over to Crucial's memory advisor and put this exact model you have to determine the compatible speed. In conclusion, the Dell Latitude 3440 is a solid business laptop. It offers reliable performance, a decent keyboard and functional trackpad, though it could do with a few improvements in the screen, touchpad, and webcam department. If you're in the market for a reliable, business class laptop, this could be a good option to consider, especially for doing a bit more multimedia or driving more monitors than the average person. That's it for this review of the Dell Latitude 3440 2023 model with a dedicated GPU. Don't forget, if you like this video and found it helpful, share it with someone who might be considering this laptop. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts or any other questions you may have about this machine. Again, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date on the 500 subscriber giveaway. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.